Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's the Monday Morning Podcast, a very special edition of the Monday Morning Podcast. And as promised, this special edition, I got not one, not two, but two special <laughs> guests. So he's got to be three. Um, with me are uh, not only two phenomenal comedians, great-looking guys, but also the guys I made uh, the hit short film from the Tribeca Film Festival, if I could be so bold, the movie Cheat. I have uh, actor producer Robert Kelly, hello, star of Torgasm, yes. star of Stage and Screen. What's that other movie you did? Uh, you ran, remember you ran down the street, uh, ran through the park, and you went by and you ran into Ghost the Town. Guy? Ghost Town. Ghost Town. I've done Ghost Town and Louis Show. L- uh, Lucky Louis. He's all over. Not Lucky, Lucky Louis. Just Sorry. Louis. Louis. FX. Sorry. The Louis Show, I hear nothing but great things about that. We're going to get back to you in a moment. <laughs> and then we have the Teen Idol sensation from the Opie and Anthony program, fresh off his shoot off at Teen Beat magazine. <laughs> we have the director and star of the movie Cheat, Joe DeRosa over there. I like that. I like how you did the director second. Oh, you like, like that? Headliner, yeah, yeah. You like that? That's right. <laughs> that feed your fucking ego? <laughs> I like that fucking neurosis actually took my... Iced coffee and put it way over there so it would be on a coaster. Yeah, it's got to be on a coaster, Bob. Uh, yeah, basically, rings. for the listeners, I am staying in Joe's place here. And Joe is such a fucking me free dude. I am, like, paranoid. Like, you, if you leave anything down for more than two seconds, he has to pick it up and then set it in its place. He's like, Joe, you really... Yeah, I got an OCD thing. Though. It's not healthy. I know. I was here one day. I took, I took the clock off the wall and hit it. Oh, you, oh, I would love <laughs> to this that. day, I don't know when that happened. Like, I don't remember finding the clock and rehanging it. Because you're neurotic. You're neuro- you have OCD. You just do it. You just found it and hung it back up. It meant nothing to you. <laughs> it's in my programming. <laughs> Where could you hide it? This place is so fucking I hit immaculate. it right, right behind that. I hit it right behind there uh, in, in between some records. And Are then I, not- I took that vase, that shitty vase that he leaves on the table. So when chicks come over and they're like, oh, he's, he's artsy. He's, I respect you know, that. The vase. You got you to gotta do what you got to do to get in there. Yeah. That's true. But you can always take it off when your friends come over. Um, I hid that in the couch. And then I hid something else somewhere. Well, when my friends come over, I will take it off. Oh. oh Jesus. Joe, let me ask you. What, what, what exactly? <laughs> what exactly? <laughs> that was like a, a phenomenal joke in your head. What, what is the, uh, <laughs> look at his DVDs. Yep. I'm sure you have an entire system there. Is yeah. There comedy. Comedy. Well, ho- live performance on the top shelf. Then you got horror that bleeds into sci-fi, that bleeds into uh, action fantasy, that bleeds into drama, that bleeds into documentary. That right, bleeds into say comedy. bleeds into one more time. I'm going to hit you with this microphone. If you were dating a supermodel, Joe, yes. okay, let's just have a major hypothetical here. Okay. I know in your world it's, it's doable. It's happening, Bill. We get that first film out. I'm going to be in that director's <laughs> chair with a 10 on my lap. Can I just say something real quick? Well, no, I they're, not, they're not in that order. Yes, they that's, are. That's in order of how he fucking gives pep talks in life. Joe doesn't live if – if you have problems, Joe will give you – uh, psychological experiences from movies. It's just like, dude, it's like when in Pulp Fiction, you want to remember Bruce Willis? It's like, what the fuck? It's not you even your what? life. He does do that. He goes, come on, Bill. This is, this is the fucking Goodfellas moment where Ray Liotta goes. And what happened? She goes around and she makes a fucking call from yeah. the house phone. Remember when Adrian was running the ring and the hat fell off? That's the same thing, dude. Your wallet fell out of your pocket, but you were running to see your you know, girl. And you know what that reeks of? An unbelievably... Sad and isolated childhood. <laughs> Joe, let's well, let's I, open up about that, Joe. All right. What do you want to know? When did you realize that you weren't going to be the hip swinger that you are today? <laughs> <laughs> Was it during elementary school? At what point did you I, know I, your place? I realized it when uh, when the uh, I invited the neighborhood kids over to swim in my parents' pool, and the neighborhood bully beat me up in my own backyard with my mom in the kitchen. Like, oh like an ear earshot. <laughs> For what? Because he had a pool and his he's parents just, were broke. He's just a dick. He was just be, you know, he was just a dick. And he, you know, and then my mom. I remember my mom coming out and having to throw the bully out of our own backyard. You know, I thought uh, it was gonna. I I thought I was like making. I thought I was saddling up to to the bit to the oh, tough yeah. kid. Like I'll invite him in. He won't pick on me anymore. And, and no, he 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 turned right on me. In my own house. That's balls, man. So that, and that, that was doubly emasculating for you, huh? You had kids over, yeah. right? You yeah. still got the shit kicked out of you. 
And then your fantasy that you were going to kick the fuck out of him didn't happen, and your mother had to come in and be the bouncer in your life, Joe. Well, the fantasy yeah. that well, he he didn't have a fantasy of kicking the shit out of him. He had a fantasy of like uh, the movie Bodyguard, the guy actually becoming his buddy, them getting a motorcycle, rebuilding yeah, it, finding that carburetor. Yeah, in the junkyard. <laughs> yeah, I thought that's what was Joe happen. riding on the back with his <laughs> arms around his chest. Yeah, I thought that was I was going to be like his little sidekick. <laughs> yeah, did you hear what he said, Bubsy? You know, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it never happened. That explains your behavior in bars. Why you always talk shit. If you're in a big enough group, you will talk shit as you back out. He's one of the great shit talkers in bars at, while backing out. <laughs> it's sort of his version of the moonwalk. Yeah, fuck you. Fuck you. I don't give a fuck. You don't do this shit. <laughs> right out the goddamn door. Well, let's talk about the film here. Who's kidding who? We can hang out and shoot the shit anytime we want. <laughs> uh, yeah. We're no. in the Tribeca Film Festival. Let's go around the room and let's let's hear uh, the delusional fantasies of what you hope this film will do for you. We'll start with you, Robert Kelly. Well, I hope that Bobby sees it, and uh, that De Niro, of yeah, course. of course. Well, I call him Bobby because oh. I'm in the festival. You did go to one party. I do, I did go to a party that we went. First of all, I didn't want to go to the party. You right. two made me go to the party. That's right. Then Joe comes into the party, says I can actually go. I can actually go. I'll go with you. We go there. It winds up being this fantastic, great time. It's I unbelievable. Scorsese was there. Scorsese yeah. was there. Elton John was there. Leary was there. Did you Did you get to meet any of those people? Well, I wanted to walk over. We met. I walked over and tapped Leary on the shoulder and said, hey, what's up? He was like, hey, what's up? You know, to me and Joe. And then I wanted to go over and he was over smoking a butt because he's a fiend. Did you go over and shake Elton John's little meaty, stubby fingers? Mm -mm. He always talks about his fingers aren't long enough to play the piano. <laughs> 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 and then took your business card and stuck it between his front teeth. <laughs> I'm doing things, kid. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you heard about this movie, Cheat, but you will. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Was um, he dressed in a Donald Duck outfit? No. He, well, he, he was, was dressed in a regular suit, but he was wearing literally like they look like the ruby slippers from Wizard of Oz. Uh, like it was shit. totally was normal. Awesome suit, and then his shoes had sequins all over him. And I was like, that's why he's out in John. Like, the he's, the yeah. funniest part, though, is Dennis Leary had to host it. He had to open up the show. Uh -huh. And look, did you see that? Did yeah. you see it? Well, you know. I did that intentionally just to see if it. Oh, Bobby put the iced coffee near the mixer, and uh, Joe immediately put. Actually, I respect that, Joe. This yeah. is for the radio show. But you got to admit, if you just had a newspaper here from today, you'd move it. It's going to get it wet. <laughs> <laughs> then Leary, Leary went up in, in true comic form. I mean, he's Leary. Everybody knows him, but right. he still went up. And he, these kids were on stage, and he was just meandering. And he kept on going, give it up for the kids. <laughs> and then the guys were uh. breaking down the stage. Give it up for these guys. They're working hard. Give it up for them. <laughs> yeah, nothing. And then he did one joke about meatloaf that kind of hit, and he did it again. And it was like, uh, oh, you could just see him fucking flounder. It no never ends. There's just no, yeah, there's no dignity. You would think. That because you're Dennis Leary, you could walk into that hell room situation and it could just turn all around and it isn't. You're now, excited for half a second. Oh, yeah, there's that guy from that awesome show. And yeah. I'm going back to my fucking beet salad here. Oh, he probably had he probably had uh, the confidence going up there. Then, you know, a hundred kids from PF 17, whatever shit school with, you know, fluorescent green shirts on all climbed up on stage Always and like took that. over. Yeah, so let me, I want to hear about what, what did you well, guys? I, I would have probably uh, had heart palpitations if I saw Scorsese. Uh, you know, man, it was really cool. It was like weird seeing him in real life. But then, you know, it wasn't like we watched him talk about film for an hour. He just he just introduced the movie. So you were just like, uh, still, oh, fuck, there's Scorsese. Introduced so how, how soon did your ego kick in? Were you like, well, I'm a filmmaker, too. It I'm didn't. Go, it, it didn't. didn't. Wow. No, dude. You know why? No, you was, see, he was he was cold. We had to leave. It was an outdoor event. It was freezing. He, it was it wasn't really freezing. cold outside. I heard nobody else shivering oh, except for him. It wasn't and freezing he, to Bob. It he, wasn't freezing to natural seven layers <laughs> over here. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking cold oh, to me. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait. Nine minutes in, the first fat joke. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Hey, you going to take that? I might not be in What's shape. What's the world coming to? <laughs> Joe, you are just a, a shape, okay? You're not healthy. There's nothing about you that physically is appealing. You're fat. You're fat without being fat. <laughs> Yo, you, should, you know what, Bobby? You really fucked with me when we were doing the levels for this. Bobby came over here just totally mellow. 
He already meditated. He ate a bran muffin. And I'm going, Bob, do the levels. He's like, test. test you're <laughs> you're adjusting testing, your level, though. Testing. No, I'm not. You just stepped on that I'm, funny uh, no, little. No, this is Bobby's. Oh, that's Bobby. Yeah, oh, you put yeah. yourself in the third hole, yeah, Bill. Yeah, there you go there, Look Bob. Look at you stepping yeah. back. I'm here. Look I'm at here. Joe, the control freak over there. Dude, I, I know what's going. We got I, it, Joe. You I edited the movie. <laughs> just relax. It's over. <laughs> I would have thought you plugged yourself in the first <laughs> hole. That's all. Listen, Joe. I want to know why Bob was totally warm and you weren't. Now that I'm looking at your fucking adolescent Will Ferrell torso, <laughs> <laughs> he really is. I You're know. Will Ferrell in about 1992, right before he booked SNL, so he's still sort of starving, yet eating cheeseburgers. He gives me hope. I'm like, if that guy can make it with that torso, I got a shot. Oh, my God. We watched. We were over here. He has yes. like, a, he has like a, 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 a female mummy body. <laughs> Just where the tits are dried up and sags. Oh, right. Zingers. Get Woo! your zingers. Get your hot zingers. Come on, female mummy was hard to say. Bob, do you know how bad I wanted to laugh at Joe in that moment? You really let me down. I'm sorry. It happens. It's the reserve shoot. That's Just... why these podcasts are good, man. It's live. It's happening. There's no editing. <laughs> And he's holding the mic closer to his mouth. He just completely fucked me. You know what, Bob? I hope you distorted this entire time. You sound like Sorry. a goddamn cyborg. Right there. Here we go. There you go. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. So yesterday we actually uh, – we, we had on Netflix and we watched the other guys. Dude, Will Ferrell is fucking hilarious. Every fucking movie he does, that guy is absolutely hilarious. Yeah. I remember yeah. when I was on the road, I went and I saw Blades of Glory because yeah. I was like, this is going to be an absolute hunk of shit. I don't know how to write a movie. It's not going to be any more basic than this. Let me. And I had my little notepad. Like I was going to take notes, not realizing that they turn the lights out during movies, even though I'd been to a zillion of them. <laughs> and I went in there, and he was fucking hilarious. Oh. Still a shit movie, but he was—he somehow still was funny. He was funny. It. He was funny in that movie, uh, the, what, Travel to the Center of the Earth. What was that movie? Uh, oh, and he had that big Land of the Lost. The side yeah, Land of the, the Lost. I mean, I, that movie I thought was going to just suck. Going to be him jumping the shark, but he's hilarious when he's just running yeah. through the middle of the fucking desert. <laughs> <laughs> No, you know what he does that's great is he's able to adjust what he's doing to the other person. Yeah. So if the other person's going way big, he can bring it down. If they go big, he can bring it up. I yeah. think that, that guy's the shit. Yeah, he's awesome. And uh, on our next – we're going to send him an offer the next time we make another 12-minute movie. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the difference between doing this podcast and my podcast is that – I can talk about trash famous people and fucking just trash anybody because no one's going to hear it. Right. I'm actually nervous about talking shit about certain people because people probably actually listen to this podcast. To this, po this podcast is actually doing uh, very well. All right. I finally, uh, I finally checked out the numbers. What are you? Uh, I don't want to brag here, Bobby, but I'm doing really well. What is it? I got about uh, I got about 860 people listening to this, Bob, worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> I got a couple people in Poland. <laughs> Somebody in Sri Lanka? Why do I keep saying Sri Lanka? I, I don't know. know. I just, uh, I just uh, like it. Somebody in Iceland and Newfoundland who actually help you buy these microphones? They sent you money? Oh, uh, no. No, this is kind of all out of pocket. I just, I just yeah. added a donation button, and uh, I was very surprised. People donated. They were unbelievably generous. And look at me, paying it forward. Look at that, people. You hit the donation button. What do you get? Not only do you get an extra podcast this week, you get two celebrities, yeah. two breakout stars at the Tribeca <laughs> Film Festival 2011, Robert <laughs> Kelly and Joe DeRosa, fresh <laughs> off his acquittal of that 17-year-old in fucking we were Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Oh, Jesus. Would you stop? <laughs> say that that's really, not true. That really fucks with Joe when you yeah, say Yeah, please say like that's that. not true. No, Joe. All right. Joe, yeah. Joe oh, you is- You banged a 17-year-old? No. Oh. Stop. I, I see what you're doing. I see I, what you're I, doing. I, I'm just asking questions. No, holding a hand, well, that's the thing. He okay. held hands with her romantically, which is technically still on the book statutory rape. It's like one of those towns Would you where, stop? where they still have those laws. You can't walk a pig that's not funny. down the right side yeah. of the street yeah. at 2 in the morning. So that's Joe, not funny. So Joe was holding her hand. Right. He, he said that she mentioned that, you know, she was getting her class ring for high school and she had big knuckles, so it was weird <laughs> to try to get a ring on. So Joe was examining her hand. And a chaperone saw it. <laughs> and then Joe, you know, Joe, Joe gets up. I wasn't trying to fuck her <laughs> when he finally flipped out. So it was a whole case. I fronted him the money. I sent him some, you know, I, I sell DVDs after my show. I right. sent some cash. I made it go away. Right. I made it go away, Bobby. That's good, man. Uh, oh, Joe's getting wise. He's getting wise. He, he, was, he was taking the bait at first. Uh -huh. This isn't funny. <laughs> We just became Joe. You, did you feel like you were back at your pool party when you were seven years old? Get your I head did a little bit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you guys saying mean things for no reason, you know? Hey, Bobby, <laughs> be honest. Be honest with yourself because I'm going to be real honest. Yeah. If, when you were a kid, if Joe lived on, on your block, you yeah. would have beat him up, right? I would have took his moped. I would have broke his big wheel right in front of him. <laughs> yeah. I would have took every lunch ticket he ever got. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, Joe, you look pained over there. <laughs> no, I'm just, you know, I'm just, just listening. <laughs> you know, Joe, Joe, his face got all red and his glasses would steam up, which made it even funnier. I remember when I was a kid, we tied this kid to a tree and threw fireworks at him. Like, that's what we would have done to Joe. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? What's wrong I actually, with you? I actually-